In this section, we will be discussing about interceptive orthodontics. So anything related to kids who are in their mixed dentition. So when we think interceptive, we have to think of two main uh, categories or two main areas we have to focus on with these kids. The first one is to, to look at their tooth eruption and space management. We want to make sure that every tooth is erupting in its position at the right timing. That's one important thing until everything erupts where it belongs. Then the other one is to make sure that their growth and development of the jaws is in within the normal range. So not, there is no, for example, deficiency in the maxilla, there is no overgrowth of the mandible. If there's anything we can do to normalize the proportion and the ratio between the jaws, this is for us to first diagnose it and notice it, be aware of it, look at it and then decide whether we can do something about it, whether we have to refer it, whether we have to maybe remove some habits which are contributing to these uh, things. So when you think interceptive, think about it as a whole. Think about the child as a whole. Uh, remember, when you were a child, you had a pediatric doctor, a physician who took care of you as a child. He made sure you are taking your vaccination, you are growing normal in your height, weight, uh, you are developmentally well, so that the consequences of any problems, if it is treated early on, would make it much less to deal with it at a, a older age. So if we miss something for these kids in their growth and development and in their teeth eruption, we definitely can do something about it later on, but it will be much heavier price and longer treatment. So let's look first about tooth eruption and space management. So it's very important that you become super, super familiar with the tooth eruption sequence and the timing and the age of wh uh, which tooth should erupt at what age. So let's have a quick review of this and then we will make a nice game after that to lock in the learning. So when we say mixed dentition, basically we're talking about kids around the age of six when they start to have their first permanent tooth. And which is the first permanent tooth to erupt? Usually, usually it is the first molar or the lower centrals. And in general, there is a tendency for the lower teeth to erupt before the upper teeth in general. So we would see probably lower first molars erupting before upper first molars, but not necessarily. But in general, that's usually the thing. So around the age six to seven, we are supposed to see, as per the chronological, uh, age uh, or dental age and there's a difference actually between dental and chronological dental meaning based on this chart what is supposed to be the dental age of the patient chronological is based on their uh, birth certificate when is their birthday and how old they are so they might be for example 12 but dentally they look like someone who is 8 because they haven't changed their premolars or they didn't have their teeth erupted so what uh, we are concerned about is the dental age more than the chronological age. So around six to seven, as we said, we should expect to have upper and lower first molars as well as the lower central incisors. Let's follow up here with this picture on the side because it kind of put the white ones as what should be erupted. So around six to seven, we should have upper lower um, sixes and lower centrals. Then between the age seven to eight, we usually get what? The lower laterals and the upper centrals. Around that age, we should have these teeth erupted. So this keep, the, keep these images in your mind so that when a patient comes to you on the chair, you remember this and you look for what teeth are supposed to be erupted so that if you have a problem with a tooth that's supposed to be there and you can't see it, then you can investigate. So you need to know what's the normal first so that you can appreciate and find what's the abnormal. So seven to eight, uh, lower laterals, upper centrals. Then eight to nine, we usually get the upper laterals. Then the patient will get a pause around two to three years where they don't change any more baby teeth. And sometimes the, the mom will come and tell you, yeah, we, we, we used to change teeth, but we're not changing any teeth anymore. Is he done with eruption? They don't know that there is usually a pause of two years, almost when we don't have any changes. After that pause area, we usually get the lower canines. And the lower canines usually erupt between 9 to 10 years of age. 
and then after that we will get the upper uh, the lower force uh, and we will get the upper force as well around 10 to 11 the first premolars usually erupt, uh, erupt around that that time but there's a big range for this and there is a big range in general for kids in their development. I mean, nowadays, uh, I don't know in where you are, which country you are in, but it, where I live in Dubai here, because it's very hot, uh, many times we see kids come with their teeth very early. So we would find a girl with at age five and she has all her uh, first uh, molars, for example, and she's changing the lower centrals. Uh, and they can be done by age 10 they have finished all their adult teeth so we do this see this variation and i hear that in the colder areas usually kids can be a bit later in their development with the teeth so when it comes to upper and lower fours uh, there's usually a huge variation i would say like two years variation the more we go into the posterior teeth the more we see the variation in age gets bigger but in general these are a general kind of um you know age uh, uh, charts um so we can use them as a guidance but we keep our uh, knowledge open that it doesn't mean that this child is abnormal every child has their own journey and their own developmental miles uh, so for example a child would have their first baby tooth uh, let's say at age four months i would expect that they will be also quick in their uh, adult teeth eruption if a child uh, was a year and a half until they had their first baby tooth i would expect that they will be also delayed in their adult teeth and i usually ask the mother actually that question if i see something kind of outside the range of normal i would check what happened at the early age and i would correlate that okay so then we said we get the upper and lower fours and then around that age we are now kind of 11 to 12 we do get the uh, second molars which we call them of course the second year old 12 year old molar by the way you know the first molars are called the first molars are called uh, six years old molars and second molars are called the uh, 12 years old molars and then we would get the second molars as well as we can get the fives at the same time, the second premolars, sometimes one before the other, but we usually prefer that the five erupt before the seven so that the seven would not push the six forward and make use of the five space, but it should be fine. Uh, and then we also get the upper canines. Again, the upper canines are also, uh, there's a big variation. Sometimes that kind of sequence of which goes uh, first is very, um, very uh, uh, uncoordinated when it comes to canine, premolar, premolar, and second molar. So there can be a lot of variations. Sometimes the canines come first and then the uh, five and then the seven. So there isn't really a rule for that. As long as every tooth has a space for it to come in, and it's uh, coming at the range of the right time, we should be fine. Another thing you need to be aware of is the difference between the right and left side. That's also another important indicator. So if someone has a tooth on the, let's say, upper central, and then we don't see the other upper central, and there is all, more than six months uh, difference, then I should investigate because teeth between right and left not necessarily they will erupt exactly at the same time but usually within six months of that time so if i see a bigger variation than six months i need to investigate that's a, an important thing that you need to remember and of course after that the third molars would erupt between the age of 17 to 21 of course that's even a huger variation because some people have their third molars and some people do not have their third molars or some people um, they have a space for it or it is impacted or 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 okay so remember to recap sixes at around age six and then lower centrals that's usually around six then lower laterals upper centrals around seven to eight and then eight to nine we get the laterals then we get a pause for one to two years and then we start to have the lower canines then lower fours and upper fours 
fours, so when I say fours, it means the uh, first premolar. So we usually in ortho say uh, three, meaning canine, four first premolar, uh, five second premolar, six first molar, and seven is uh, second molar. So because I know there is a different uh, numbering system worldwide, so I don't want to confuse you, I will use it just so that it's simpler to refer to. So we said uh, upper fours, lower fours usually erupt around that time. And then we have a variation of which one will erupt first, the fives, sevens, or canines in the upper. And then third molars. So let's do a quick game. And I usually like to play this game with the students. And we do more and more. I will only do two of them for you where you need to guess the age or I will tell you the age and you need to tell me if this child is early, late or on time. What do you need to, if I show you a panel, you need to think about three things to help you decide about the age of the patient. So first of all, when I look at the panel, first of all, I, I always count the teeth. There is nothing more embarrassing and um, uh, you know, it doesn't look good more than a dentist not knowing that there is a missing tooth. So always count the teeth, as simple as this sounds, but the, mo the, more, the most important it is, because you really need to know if there is anything missing. So usually I count the teeth. I am more interested, of course, about the adult teeth. I don't count the baby teeth, although I look at if there is a successor and if, they're, if they are present. Uh, so the first thing, I count the teeth. And then I look at which teeth are erupted. So I kind of get a range. So immediately my eye usually goes for the laterals, upper laterals, because as we said, after that, there is a, an era. And before that, there is a, an age group. So if I see the laterals erupted, I know for sure this patient should be above nine years old. And then the other thing that can give you a clue, because they might be erupted, but you don't have a clue when did they erupt. So you're kind of lost, like when, how far since the laterals erupt, for example, or centrals or whatever. So always look at the root formation of the erupted teeth. As you know, the root formation should complete around two to three years after the eruption. So if I see the root apex is still open and only there is maybe a millimeter or two to be closed, I know that this tooth has been in the mouth for around two years at least. So also there I can get a clue around what age I am. So my eyes goes to the laterals and then I go to the roots of the sixes because that gives me an idea again if I am within the range of nine or more. Then I look at the root resorption of the deciduous teeth and the root formation of the successors. So meaning, my eye will also go to the premolars in the lower and in the upper, but usually the lowers are more clear. So I would look at something like this here. I would look at how much root uh, resorption there is on the D and E and how much root formation is there on the uh, premolars. So as we know, any tooth that's about to come in the mouth usually will have two thirds of root formation already developed. So if I see around two thirds and there's good amount of root resorption, first I know that the sequence is going well. And then I kind of get an idea that this tooth is about to be erupted probably within six to nine months. So I also get an idea about the age of the patient. Sounds good. Okay, so now let's go to this quick exercise. So if I tell you that this patient is seven years old female, tell me if she is uh, early, late, or on time. So when we are comparing, we are comparing to, again, to the chronological age with the dental age. So dentally, when you look at her, you would think that chronologically she should, she should be what? So let's take a moment to look at it and then make a decision. Okay, so what am I looking at? Again, as we said, I am looking immediately, I am counting, so I know I'm not missing any tooth. Then I am looking at the laterals, so the laterals are erupted. I am looking at the root formation of the sixes, so that it's almost complete. So in my head, I'm saying definitely this patient is above nine, right, in, in this scheme. And then I can see that the lower canines are about to be erupted. So kind of more than nine, maybe around 10. Uh, there is a lot of root resorption of the baby teeth here. Look at it over here. 
So I would say that this patient is around 10 years. And usually we give a range. I, in, in the exam, I tell them, put, give me a year of range. So they can say, mm, I would accept anything between, if they say 10, 9.5 to 10.5, maybe that's a good, good one. Or 10, uh, 10 to 11, maybe not 11, but 10.5 should be a good, good range, 9.5 to 10.5. So definitely, if I tell you that if this patient comes and you see her and she's seven and you see in her mouth all of this and you look at her x-ray, you say that this girl is early. She's having quickly her teeth. Okay. Now, next one. If I tell you that this is a panel of a 13 years old male, is he late, early, or on time? Okay, take a moment to have a look. You can pause the video and kind of study it before we move on with the discussion. So for age 13, uh, or if I want to say what's the dental age of this patient without knowing his age, I would say I'm looking, of course, all the teeth are erupted. So he is in full dentition except for the lower fives, right? Uh, which are supposed to be erupted between 11 to 12 years old. So from that aspect, he's a little delayed in the fives. Uh, it looks like this is a panel maybe of an 11 and a half years old from that aspect, although his sevens are erupted. His sevens are erupted and they are in full occlusion. So he's not that much delayed. So this is sometimes what you see. It, people are not perfect. They don't go by the book. So we see a lot of variation. So it might be just that this tooth is delayed and everything sounds to be on time. So even upper canines are erupted, upper fives are erupted. The amount of root formation on the seven sounds good to me. If, the, if the, it has erupted at 12 and there is this amount of eruption, it looks okay to me. So I would say he's on time and he is just a little bit delayed on the lower fives. Okay, so we will stop over here and I'll see you again in the next section.